Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from the UK, just north of London. Today is, what is it? It's Friday, the 18th of December 2020, which is crazy and I say that every week. If you're joining us for the very first time, then welcome to you. I really, really hope that you like it here. And if you're coming back, welcome back. You already know my knitting shenanigans and everything that is going on. So I'm so glad that you're coming back. All right, so I haven't done this in about two weeks. Um, I, I don't know, it's been a funny two weeks to be honest. And I only really want to podcast if I A, have the time and B, feel like doing it. And baby has been sleeping a lot less during the day, which means that recording when I am with him by myself is pretty much not working anymore. Um, but I have my husband looking after him for an hour or so now, so I hope that I can show you what I've been making. I have a little stack of finished objects on my lap. I also brought out some of my works in progress, even though I didn't bring any everything. This window of opportunity um, to record just kind of popped up, so I just grabbed whatever I could very quickly and decided to get started with podcasting. Before I start with my finished objects, maybe you'd like to know what I'm wearing today. Um, this is a sweater that I've actually been wearing a ton. Um, I finished it last year, I think. It's the Arata sweater by Jennifer Steingas. And I knitted out of some Norwegian yarn. This is, I think it's called the Pure Wool by Pickles. Pickles is a Norwegian yarn brand that I really liked. Um, we went to the store. Um, I went to the store with my knitting friend Marion, um, actually twice, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, I finished the sweater, which was very, very much inspired by Melanie of the Bright and Tinker podcast because she was knitting a similarly colored rust orange sweater and I'm not an orange person, but she really inspired me and I finished it and I almost gave it away. I actually considered giving it to one of my sisters and I just didn't think I would wear it and now we're here and I'm wearing it all the time. So I'm really happy that I've kept it. So you can maybe see, maybe not with my hair, it is a colorwork yoke and it is just so comfy. The yarn has held up really well. There is, of course, some pilling because I've just been wearing it so much. Sorry, the postman was just outside and I'm sitting in basically in my bay window right at the front of the house. So it's always really, really awkward to be recording and it gets very, very sidetracking. Anyways, um, what have I finished? Most excitingly, I have finished these socks and they have been on the needles, believe it or not, since August because I started them when I was still pregnant, very, very pregnant and living at my parents' place. And yeah, I didn't pick them up for a while after we had the baby because A, we had a baby and B, pattern socks weren't really my priority. But I have finally finished them, um, so I'm very, very happy about that. Um, these are the Birds of a Feather socks and I used leftovers for the entire pair of socks which is very exciting. So both the grey and the pink uh, were used in my West Knits Mystery Knit Along Shawl for 2019. Um, they are both uh, Malabry Gold sock yarn which doesn't have any nylon so I have mixed feelings about that but I figured I'll just use them up and they're just such pretty colors, so that worked out pretty well because I had some sizable leftovers from that shawl. And then I used a mini, which I believe is from Das Mondschaft, for the heels, so at least the heels have some nylon in them. Logically, I probably should have also put a yarn with nylon for the toes, but I really wanted to have that pop of pink, so we'll just see how they wear and I can keep you updated on that. So they are done, very, very happy about that. Next up, I also finished my baby sweater that I was knitting on last week, or last time I recorded, I should say. This is a modified version of the Flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. And that is a free pattern. I didn't do any of the garter detail and I kind of, I talked about this last week. I didn't read the pattern and just kept on increasing and doing all these things and I increased too much but I figured I'll just keep going and if worse comes to worst the sweater will be a little bit bigger than originally planned 
but that is not that is not a problem since babies do tend to grow and actually looking at this and looking at my baby i think i'm not even that far off so yeah i used some hand spun yarn for this which is very exciting i remember that it was some kind of fancy mohair wool and something else blend 99% sure it was from Das Mondschaft, but again, I'm sorry, I don't really know. I just kind of picked the first skein of hand spun that I could find, and this one was already caked up and kind of worked for the idea that I had. So I am very happy to have this done. I think it is really cute and adorable, and I love the look of hand spun things in general, but for baby knits, they're just perfect because, well, mostly you tend to have small quantities of yarn when you do hand spinning, at least I do. And this worked for just one skein of yarn and I have now used it up and yeah, very, very happy about this little sweater. And now I have more hair fluff in my mouth. Um, anyways, I also did a very quick project because I was actually thinking about what I could knit for Kai, for my husband, for Christmas. And honestly, Knitting him a pair of socks right now is just out of the question because most of the knitting time I get is when he's around because otherwise I'm alone with a baby and yeah, I can't knit a pair of socks before Christmas in time and I didn't want to stress myself out. Um, but one thing that he actually needs is some mittens. And basically the day that I decided that I would just knit him some fingerless mitts, um, Louise Tilbrook came out with a free pattern that you can actually find on Instagram. And they are called the Fuss Free Mitts. Um, she also has a Fuss Free Beanie and I think some kind of Fuss Free Baby Sweater cardigan, something. And honestly, I'm not sure if Kai will like these, but I just decided to whip them up. I think it took me about two days, but I wasn't even knit knitting on them a whole lot. I just kind of picked them up every now and then. And I whipped up these little fingerless mittens and they are super simple. So it's just a textured pattern. It has basically just a hole for the thumb, which I personally find quite comfortable. I modified them a tiny bit because I didn't make them as long, both because I know that Kai didn't really want long mittens and also because I was worried about running out of yarn, which I didn't. I think I would have been fine. The reason why I'm not sure if Kai will like them is because they don't go up very, very far. Again, I just kind of did my own thing. I didn't read the pattern or follow it to a T, honestly. So this might not be the pattern's fault. Um, I just didn't knit them very long. Again, I was running out of yarn. So I'll just give them to him and see if he likes them and if they are too short for him, if he would like mittens that kind of go more like this, because this is how I usually knit my fingerless mittens. I would just keep them and knit him another pair. But I just thought they're really cute, they fit really well, and yeah, I use black yarns, I'm not sure how much of this you can actually see, but I think they're quite pretty, and yeah, I like them. I kind of pulled out a black skein and a grey skein and tried to figure out what he would like best, but he likes very, very neutral things, unless it is socks. So yeah, um, the yarn that I used for this was a 50 gram ball of Sandner's yarn in their Pear Gunt base, which is a decay weight, I think. And I ordered quite a few balls of this yarn in different colors originally to make a baby blanket, which I then never made. So I've just been using it up for different projects. I knit two baby sweaters out of it. And this was just another kind of leftover ball that I had lying around. It is not the softest yarn, it is quite woolly, um, but I do really like it. So I'm curious again to see if Kai will like these also because they are not super super soft, but I will let you know. So those are my finished objects and we will move on to some works in progress. So for works in progress, I'm actually working on a couple of things at the moment. Uh, one of them is a design project, which I'm not too sure about. So I'm not showing that for now, but I will let you know if that ever comes to fruition. But I did also just really feel like knitting some vanilla socks. So some plain stockinette, boring, simple socks. And honestly, I cast these on, I was really excited about them, and then I got sidetracked with a bunch of other stuff, so I haven't knit on them as much as I wanted. But here we are. So these are some socks for myself, I think. Um, and this is actually some yarn that I got from Voimeise 
pretty much exactly a year ago i took a trip with my friend marion and this was one of the skeins that i picked out um so this is their twin base the twin base is their soft base and this is colorway Pfirsichkern and once again as with probably all of my Wollmeisig yarns that I have um, it's a nobody is perfect skein which means that it was reduced because something was apparently not quite right with the colors but I think it is perfectly fine and looks really pretty so I'm just knitting a 64 stitch sock actually no I'm knitting a 60 stitch sock because I tend to find um, Wollmeisig yarn is a little bit thicker so I always go down four stitches than what I would usually knit for myself or for Kaya, whomever I knit the sock for. Um, I am in the middle of the heel, which is why it's kind of awkward to show you, but here we are. Um, what did I want to tell you about these? There was something, I know there was something, but I can't think of it. But here we are, it is a plain vanilla sock, and I hope that I get some more progress on this soon. Um, another thing that I have of course been working on is my sweater, my pink velvet sweater, which is a pattern by Andrea Maori. And last time I showed this to you, I was still working on the body, but as you can maybe hopefully see, I have finished the body and I am now working on the sleeve. So I think I already, every time I show this to you, I keep on going on up at about how excited I am about this sweater, how much I love it, and honestly, nothing has changed. Uh, I tried it on the other day for the very, very first time, and it fits like a dream. So I kind of told Kai that once the sweater is done, he will most likely not see me wear anything else for quite a long time. And he was like, well, it looks like, it looks like the sweater you're wearing now, which was this one except it's not orange and I mean it is different obviously but to someone who doesn't knit I can definitely see that it just looks like I'm, I'm wearing a different colored yoked sweater every day now anyways I really still love it it fits like a dream so I have started the first sleeve I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make full length sleeves because I am very very limited on my amount of yarn I think I had about 70 grams of yarn for both of the sleeves so 35 grams each. So I'm just knitting and measuring as I go. Uh, and we will see how it goes. If they are sort of like this sweater. This one again, I was playing yarn chicken. This always happens to me. I don't buy enough yarn because I don't want to spend the money on an extra skein. And then I have three quarter length sleeves on my sweaters, which is fine. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, but I am very happy with this so far and yeah, I have definitely fallen down the Brooklyn Tweed rabbit hole because this is Brooklyn Tweed Loft, I believe. It's the thinner weight. Let's see. Yeah, Brooklyn Tweed Loft. It's my first time knitting with this yarn, which is quite a splurge to be honest, but I now realize why a lot of people like it because it is just such a scrummy beautiful yarn it works well with the color work because it's woolen spun and just all these flecks of colors i'm not sure if they show up on screen but it is a really really beautiful color so yeah that is my sweater and then the last thing that i brought to show you today is of course my advent blanket so i was going to say let's see how i can show this to you without dropping my crochet hook but that has just happened so Anyways, this is my advent crochet project. So this is, what, this is what it looks like at the moment. It is a blanket, as you can see, it is quite wide. And the pattern that I'm using for this is the Neat Ripple crochet blanket, Neat Ripple blanket. If you Google Neat Ripple, it will come up. It is by Attic24. It is a free crochet pattern, which I am really, really enjoying. I must say, I mean, this is not super complicated, but it has like increases and decreases. And I'm really happy with how far my crochet skills have come this year. I always say that I'm not a crocheter and I have no idea. And I'm feeling like that is slowly and very, very slowly um, changing. I actually have some fun crochet plans for Christmas, which I'll talk about another time but anyhow this is my blanket and I'm just using one mini skein per day 
and I am really enjoying it. Like every morning I will just pick a mini skein. I do have a yarn advent calendar, but sometimes the color that comes up just doesn't really go with the colors that I had just um, crocheted previously. So I have used some of my advent calendar and I've also just been using random mini skeins that I have flying around. And mini skeins sound super fancy. When I say mini skeins, I just mean like leftovers from other projects because I do knit a lot of socks. So I have a lot of full ply yarn. And just this habit of crocheting two, uh, two rows, essentially one row there and one row back every day has really been such a nice little tradition and I'm feeling like I might continue that after Christmas. So obviously I won't have an advent calendar then, but I do have minis to sustain me for a while. And it is really nice. The amount of growth you actually get on the blanket when you just work on it a little bit every day is really good. And um, yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. So this is where we are. I think there was one day where I put in two minis and that was yesterday because yesterday was a weird day. But I'll talk more about that later. Um, but yeah, this is it. I'm using a 4mm crochet hook and sock weight mini skeins and yeah. I can't wait for this blanket to be done. Which won't happen anytime soon, but when it does it'll be very very exciting. All right, so that is basically it for the yarn and crochet and knitting content for this week. I am apparently not able to speak proper sentences anymore today. I'm so sorry. I did not have very much sleep. So what's been happening in these last two weeks? I don't know. It's been really weird. I think last time we spoke, we just ended lockdown and we were in medium tier of the COVID restrictions here in England which meant that obviously we are still being very, very careful, but um, yeah, restaurants and pubs and stuff were open or they are still open right now. Um, but yesterday, again, it was a weird day. It started out with my son having his last round of jabs or vaccinations, which is never fun. Um, then my laptop broke, which I had anticipated that to happen for a while so it wasn't a big surprise but still really really annoying because it just it's been doing that thing where it just switches off and it's nothing to do with the battery and then you can not turn it on again until at some point it decides now I'm I'm ready again and then it turns on again and sometimes it turns it on again for five minutes Sometimes it works for an entire day, you don't really know. But yesterday it really properly died. Um, so there was that. And then while I was kind of researching new laptops, because obviously I need one, we found out that we are going into COVID tier 3 restrictions, which means that everything will be closed again, except for takeaway. So yeah, it's all a bit of a bummer, really. Um, we have very questionable rules when it comes to Christmas here as well. I'm not going to go into the politics of that. But yeah, it was a weird day. It was a day where I was like, okay, I'm going to do two rows of crochet today with two colors because I just need the crochet. I think I didn't even pick up any knitting needle until very, very late in the night. But that sounds like I'm complaining. Overall, we're doing really well. Um, our baby is dealing with the vaccinations pretty okay. He has a bit of a fever, but that is quite normal. And thankfully, he's also quite happy and content, which makes a big difference. If, I'm sure you know if you have a kid. Um, besides that, again, nothing much has been happening. We've been going on a lot of walks. Um, we had a really proper cold snap for a while, which was terrible because our house was very, very cold. But we were going to get a fireplace installed. That didn't work out. But instead, we got a new radiator in that last week. So we did have heating before. It just wasn't working super well. But now we have a super nice and cozy, warm living room, which makes a world of a difference. So... I am just very happy with that solution. 
um, it means that now I can't wear my knits as much because before I was just layering them on top of each other. But I do prefer being warm. <laughs> Anyhow, we also um, got on our actual fireplace, which is right here, working last weekend, which was lovely. So I think we're going to spend some time on the weekend doing the same thing. Um, because it is just so cozy to have a proper fire going. I really, really enjoy that. We've also been trying to get into the Christmas spirit. I'm not sure. I started this Christmas period by putting up the tree super early and we've been trying to do a lot of Christmas stuff, but I'm not really in, in the Christmas mood yet. I think it has to do with us planning to be at home for Christmas, which we're not, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm very much happy with our change plans, but it just means that it's quite different but nevertheless, we have been trying uh, mince pies. We are going to make a turkey this weekend because, because we are. Um, we wanted some comfort food. Um, we were originally planning on having some takeout. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Um, for the first time ever, just before I tried a cheese truckle, a Christmas cheese truckle, which I'm not sure if that's a British thing. Or if you guys have it in the US as well, but that's been quite interesting. Um, so yeah, so we're just trying to do like little Christmassy things um, to both get in the mood for Christmas and to kind of experience what Christmas might be like here. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically the plan for the weekend and going forward. Um, I'm really, really excited that Kai has just finished a huge project at work. So he still has a couple of days to work, but he will have much more time, which will be nice. And yeah, again, I'm not really sure what we're doing. Everything is closed. We're in tier three starting from tomorrow, but I think being a knitter, that is not the worst thing. I can always cuddle up, do some knitting, do some crochet. Um, again, we have the fireplace, which for me personally makes just such a cozy, nice atmosphere. So I think we're just going to spend this Christmas period very very quietly enjoying our little baby boy who is thriving and doing new things every day and yeah that is pretty much it so um i think that is all i have for you guys today i feel like this was a little bit disjointed but that is just how it is i remember before we had a baby and when i had more time i would plan everything and well i haven't written show notes in a long time but I had more of an idea of what I was going to do and say and when I would podcast and now it is very much a matter of whenever I find a window of opportunity during which it is light, which it isn't very light here at the moment, and quiet and there are no builders and the baby is quiet and taken care of, I just have to go and do it. So it has changed a little bit, but I hope that you still enjoyed it. Um, so who knows, I probably won't talk to you again until Christmas. So if you are celebrating, I hope you have lovely holidays. I hope you're staying very, very safe and healthy. Thank you so much again for your ongoing support throughout this year. If you've been watching for a while, I really appreciate it. So I will see you very, very soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.